every short that I've made, none of it, nothing ever went viral ever. Mm. Uh, that just wasn't a thing. And I, um, but I, I think that just being kind of stubborn and, and sort of just obsessed and, and, and you start to develop a language and you start to kind of carve out, uh, uh, you know, your, your, your style, your look and, and, um, what you want to say. And, and I think that, uh, yeah, I, I would I would say just finish projects and maybe <laughs> spend more time making things and less time pitching things. Joe, I'm so I'm so thankful and excited and very um uh I don't even know what the word. I'm so happy that you're willing to share your time and to um spend some time with me today because I'm a huge fan and uh these podcasts always go super well when I'm a fan. <laughs> oh great. Yes. Likewise, thanks thanks for having me. Mm. Great. So stoked, so stoked. And and so thank you. I had come into finding out about your work. I've seen I've seen Scavenger's original short a while back and I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is totally the thing that I love, which is sci-fi done the way I think sci-fi should be done in my own oh, definition amazing. of what sci-fi is. Yes. No exposition. Cool. You just fall into a yes. world and you figure it out as you go. Yes, and, totally. And somehow I missed, I think a couple friends sent me the trailer and then I was busy and then my friend Rod Chong was like, you got to watch this show. This is my favorite show. And he has great taste. So I was like, okay, cool. And then I watched it and I was just obsessed. And I ended up just binging it as I was. Oh, amazing. And I was like, I need to t reach out to him and just, if anything, just say like, thank you. Oh, man. Amazing. <laughs> of course. Thanks for watching. It's so great. I, it's it's, so nice it's a massive endeavor. Um, yeah. So much. So and, much. Six hours, I think. of of Yeah, like six and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, this is, this is eight years, basically, um, you know, off and on, of course, but uh, yeah, it's wow. been such a crazy journey. <laughs> it's crazy to take eight years of your life and your energy and, and, and your team. It's a big team of people. Yeah. <clears throat> and for me to consume it so quickly. Um, but man, it has incredible effect. It's really challenging as I'm sure you're aware, very well aware is like the art to be pure once gone through the production process. Yeah. And man, it just had, I, I, I can't help but tell everybody about it. Oh man. Uh, that's, that's so it, nice to hear. Uh, it's found uh, its home with me and, and, and then the hearts of a lot of my friends too. They're like, this is what we need. We don't need another remix of a property right. to be done right. over again. We need something I'm, new and um, unique. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely uh, sick of that kind of thing. I mean, I, I think that just uh, the idea of like a new IP, you know, and, yeah. and it's just it just seems so refreshing to kind of like move away from sort of pre-existing IPs. I just feel like it's so overdone. Um, but I mean, that was that was a big part of the challenge with with just getting this thing off the ground. Um, you know, like the the scavenger short uh was i mean i mean it was such a kind of um small kind of like small potatoes thing for adult swim you know they had just asked me to make a short for them and and so there was no oversight and they were pretty hands off and i uh, worked with my um my buddy charles who's the co-creator but we um you know i think it was a, at the time I, I was like how cool would it be to do no dialogue there's a visual narrative you cut out all the exposition all the unnecessary exposition but but yeah i mean kind of what you're saying of like i i just feel like there's so many things that are so um heavy-handed these days and i and it'd be nice to just try something that it keeps it a little ambiguous i guess yeah and, and yeah i think when you treat the audience like they're a toddler it really there's so many times where i watch something i'm just like man why are they treating me like this i know i know <laughs> it could be so much better why don't you just oh, let I me know. figure this out you know I, absolutely I'm really 
quite blessed to, um, I, I'm 40 years old, born in 83, and quite blessed to, I've kind of grown up in the, in the, in the peak era of cinema in a lot of ways, in my opinion. And I, and a lot of those films just kind of throw you in it and you're like, well, have fun, figure it out. Yeah. Use your imagination, yeah. finish it. I know, I know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's funny, there was, there was a lot of, um, you know, as we were kind of writing in the show and, and kind of uh, figuring out sort of do's and don'ts and mm. setting up certain guidelines, I think a big part of it, a thing that I've thought about a lot was like the way characters, just, just really embracing the naturalism yeah. as much as you can, you know, and, and the, the way characters talk to each other um, as, okay. as just try to get as close to, the, to that as you can. And, and I kept bringing up this example of like, if you and I went on a hike together, we're probably going to be talking about anything but the hike itself, yes. which I, I feel like is a very common thing in like animation is there's this weird need to like explain exactly what you're doing. And it's this very CSA thing that I, it doesn't feel real to me. Um, yeah. So yeah, we just thought about that a lot. Well, you're already going up against it by not being real. I right. thought about this a lot when I was watching it, and I, th I said, this can never be translated to live action. It just couldn't. In my mind, I feel like it's so strong in the form of animation. Oh, that's awesome. It, and, and, and it holds up so well, and it's so organically imaginative. Because I was thinking to myself, because I dwell on the photorealism CGI side, and I was like, I couldn't even translate this. Like, it wouldn't even... No. I think it would do a disservice to the actual medium to try and translate it to it. So I think it's quite a brilliant thing that you and your team have disco discovered is like we have this beautiful animation style that is potentially production worthy enough to convey the idea, but not go so far down the realism route that your brain kind of unlocks it. And, you know, like, uh, I don't know, it was just it's something I really thought a lot about. I was like the form of medium that you chose to tell the story and how you chose to store it to tell to chose to, to tell it, it was, super fitting and and it's, that's kind of a rare thing i feel like sometimes you can go oh this could translate to this and that like you know like if you did it like annihilation or something it just it just wouldn't work in my mind right yeah yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that the intention um i mean i guess not like organically it, it sort mm -hmm. of was i i guess i just didn't know any other way to yeah. be honest you know and a lot of that was just kind of like we we talked about just in terms of um the process of doing it I know that um, there's a lot of animated TV shows that use a lot of rigging and a lot of uh, puppeting and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I have nothing against it. It's, it's not really my thing, but I also just don't even know how to do that. I, I all I, I, I in between. And, and I think the artists that we work with, this kind of whole milieu of artists, it's like we, there is no shortcuts and, and cheats. You know, we, we sort of, so it's a lot of work. It's a lot of drawing. I, when hearing this kind of thing is really nice because you know i i, I like showing um the the hand drawnness of it and the and that it feels almost kind of like showing the little flaws yes like the, the imperfections is a, a a thing that i think i kind of <laughs> embraced more and more as we were digging in yeah there's a there's this inconsistent consistency between things yeah, which is yeah, the human, exactly. yeah. the human thing, which I, I really, I really, um, I mean, I'm just going to, it's going to be like an hour long, just pr pray, pray. So hopefully your <laughs> ego can handle this. <laughs> yeah. To you and the entire team. It's just, yeah, there's so many things. I have a lot of questions we'll get into, of course. Yeah, but, yeah, of course. But I really do. Those are the kind of the high level things. I just, when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself that it, it just, the aesthetic of it matches so well to what it is. And it feels like, I don't know how you guys did it. Um, I'm imagining we can dive into it a little bit, but you had this beautiful proof of concept and the lack of dialogue and all of these things that are kind of high contrast to the form of medium that people are conveying, which is lowest, lowest common den not denominator, act as if everybody's an idiot. And then it's like, I hate that stuff so much. So when I watched the scavengers short and then you had that proof of concept, then you, went through the production how how in the heck did you manage to get through all the red tape by keeping it 
still i mean it changed obviously you added dialogue sure. and you had sure sure the characters became very well rounded in a lot of ways and dynamically evolved in a beautiful way and their their dialogue and interaction was incredible of course but how did you go and maintain that through the eight year production is it about eight years or did scavengers well, come out and then there was a gap and then yeah exactly yeah. there was there were sort of gaps in between everything so sure. we made the short there was a gap made the pilot gap yeah. and then we had about a year and a half to make the rest of the entire show so wow it was yeah it was crazy at the towards the end but um certainly eight years of like thinking about it and, mm. and that sort of thing um I mean, in a lot of ways, I feel like it was kind of a miracle that it's even saw the light of day, uh, yeah. especially through all the sort of merge and acquisitions and uh, everything at, at Turner and <clears throat> all that stuff. I mean, there was just a lot going on and, and we were sort of at the, at the whims of, of, of everything. Um, but uh, when we made, the, we made the pilot with Adult Swim, so mm -hmm. originally it was not a Max thing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and so it was like a pilot. low budget, right? A lot of control, yeah, low budget. Okay. Exactly. And then after that, it was kind of like, well, I don't know if this is going to work. And this seems like a pretty, I think that there was just always a concern that like, this may not be everyone's cup of tea and that this isn't going to be broad enough, that kind of a thing. Mm. Um, especially since it was not a comedy and it was just being sincere, yeah. um, you know, very and, mature, extremely um, mature. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but I think that, you know, the things that we sort of cherry picked from the short, um, I mean, I still to this day run into this with projects I work on where, um, what gets translated from the script, um, uh, it, like when execs are reading the scripts and stuff like that, there's a lot that you kind of have to relay mm. separate from the script to, to show what you're, you're, what you're talking about. So there's like, you can only write so much description in a script <laughs> to con convey like a scene where like, for example, in episode three, when Ursula looks down at the flower and there's the creature yeah. that's like the, the yeah. life cycle of that whole thing. I mean, yeah. it just was almost nearly impossible to put that in a script. Yeah. But how could you? when you have that married with some, here's some thumbnails, here's some boards, here's some designs, and let me walk you through it. Um, we uh, managed to do it. And we got very lucky with the, the show got picked up um, by uh, Billy Wee and Aaron Davidson, um, who are not at Max anymore, but they were uh, huge. I mean, amazing. And so mm. wonderful to work with. And, These are the um, producers? These are these are the, the uh, yeah these are the producers at Max basically mm, mm. that that uh, shepherded it in and shielded you yeah, yeah exactly kept it pure. Mm. exactly mm. and and I think under understood the overall kind of intentions and we're we're trying to keep that as um, you know uh, true and, and pure as, as as we wanted it to be mm. um, as a good producer yeah. should do. They should shield. Yeah, the, they yeah. should shield the creative from the yeah. the onslaught because it's already totally. hard enough to do the thing. I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. And, mm. and there was always, you know, I think that like kind of along the way, there was always um, one new thing that would come out, and you'd start to get a little like when Annihilation came out, I got a little nervous. Mm, um, yeah. I know. Eight years, you're just like the world's moving, and you're the like world's Shit. moving, and yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and. <laughs> The yeah, I mean, just as another example of like Levi the robot and scavengers. I mean, this all was sort of inspired by like Boston Dynamics when they were starting to show those videos and the, mm. the progress that Boston Dynamics has made <laughs> since the show came out. I mean, Levi is already like <laughs> this old news, you know, so it's just crazy. I love the design of Levi, and I love um, there's so many things that I love, obviously, but the mirroring of of our own reality potentially in the in and looking at yourselves and the merger of things and like becoming one with some there's a lot of philosophies at least that I glean from it or I mirrored or imposed myself onto as well as you know when you have the void of dialogue and stuff where your mind can kind of be employed to think there was a lot yeah. of moments and the the moment where she interacts and sees the beauty of the, the planet actually is, is is kind of exposing its truth to her and then she kind of yeah. saw the epiphany and then using her counterpart to see the opposite and then you're playing that duality against one another and it's just so Amazing. cool man 
there's so oh, there's you. so many layers like i get to sit there and like watch it and really it's just uh, so cool and, you know it's like there's cool. a million reasons why not to do something and also it's like there's a lot of like when i watch it again as i mentioned it's just like wow this is so rare to have this you know it's not just another washed up version of things which is cool to hear that you had good producers that understood you loved the loved and understood the property enough to yeah. shield it from becoming something and also like as you mentioned and i think i saw it in some of the youtube videos that was posted where you were saying like it's so abstract and I, that's one other thing i tell people is like this show is very inventive so when you watch it you're gonna kind of go like oh what the creature concept and the and the way of of using creatures and the concept of of it it's almost like i can tell that you're a massive nature fan you know like oh, fan yeah. of nature of course and the nature shows yeah, and totally just, taking that idea and then resynthesizing it as this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. It, it's so complicated. I, I was thinking to myself, how could you, <laughs> you could write a million words and it would still not describe what you're actually having to convey. And that's why I thought it worked so well in translation, translating to animation. Um, and you mentioned, sorry, I'm jumping all over here, but a little okay. bit tangential, but you mentioned like the fear of as long as it took, then like films like annihilation and stuff came out. There was some times where I, I, I was like, Oh, this is kind of, has a little bit of annihilation thing, but not in a comparison in a bad way. It's just almost like they're cut from similar cloth, which is cool. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think in hindsight, I, I was very kind of like, uh, almost like honored that, that mm -hmm. it, I mean, you know, Vandermeer was tweeting about it and I was like, oh, this is so cool that, that, uh, that I don't know, that I'm even, that it's even in the same sort of milieu. But, um, but yeah, I mean, big fan of nature and, um, and certainly um, uh, pulling a lot of things. I, I think that there was always kind of emulating what already exists in, in nature on earth. And there was a thing where we just kind of realized, I mean, Charles and I, as we were doing a lot of concept design and stuff, and we had a, an incredible team and we had a really uh, amazing, even concept department, concept art department mm. team and um, guys like John Juarez and Caleb Wood, they, they really, um, brought so much to the table but Charles and I realized um, that it was like almost impossible to come up with something that just totally original that doesn't already exist in nature in some kind of form or fashion yeah it's like nature's it's already the best. there it's the best yeah it's all and there it, can get, it mm. can get weird and it can get crazy if you mm. dig deep enough and um, so yeah it was a lot of like okay well if you're going to come up with your own sort of symbiotic relationships and you're going to kind of come up with your own you know um uh just ecosystems and everything um i don't know i guess part of it too is just like it wasn't stressful the pressure was off because it's all make-believe anyways but yeah. just sort of like having fun with um building that uh encyclopedia or whatever that um uh and then and then kind of building out your ecosystem and mm -hmm. and i think also there was a thing um uh of just thinking about these organisms as like, what is their functionality and what, mm -hmm. what kind of utility do they serve to the characters and yeah. then sort of building backwards almost of mm -hmm. like, then how do they exist in nature? So there was a lot of mm -hmm. interesting things where you almost had two separate departments going you had the writer's room moving and they were building up these story arcs and the character arcs and everything. But then you had the kind of like art department and, um, which was building a lot of the organisms and a lot of the, the, the environments and everything. But we wanted to make sure that there was just always like a thread between both worlds and that, that both departments, everybody was sort of aware of what was going on. Mm. Um, because I think that what happens a lot, especially in animation and TV is that these are very compartmentalized and they're separated. And yeah. so, okay, scripts are done. That's locked in. Let's put it into this. And this was a much more organic process. Mm. There was a lot of really nice back and forth. I feel that it's very inventive on both sides. I think that's just as a, thankfully I'm just a consumer of it on the outside. Cause I don't have the, I don't have the, the scars of production so I can just like completely <laughs> consume it without having any kind of imprint on it. Yeah. And, and I felt that like, there's that one scene where this creature has this, like it kind of comes down and stabs the person then absorbs their DNA and resynthesize them and brings yeah. them back to the herd. And I was like, 
again, as you mentioned, it's like it's it's inventive. That's an inventive thing, and then but nature, you know, from nature basically, and then um, things that are parasites. But then it comes to the herd, and then and then like basically uh, annihilates them, and then reforms into. It's just like, man, it's just so cool. <laughs> and, but then if you think about what it was trying to do by cloning the character, and then her retrieving and getting him to see like he's shifting in the wrong direction yeah. potentially, like he's evolving and, and potentially the wrong one and his, right, right. his conclusion. Yeah. And I mean, I don't want to spoil it for anybody because I don't, I really don't. I, I re- I'm trying to do my best interview without you, without us pulling too much. Cause if you're listening to this, I, I would actually urge you to stop listening to this and then please go watch it and then share it with all your friends because um, it needs to be seen. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was, I was somewhat, I was somewhat like not disappointed or sad, but I was just like, damn, this show needs more, it needs just more stuff behind it, like. It needs, and, and, but I think it's just, it's one of those things that's going to find its fans. Like it was cool to see that he's a pretty famous YouTuber. His name's Nerd Writer, I think is is his alias. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a nice right. thesis on, and he's he did, got, yeah, yeah. I thought that was. I don't, I, I'm uh, curious. That was it. nice. Uh, we, you know, it was a very kind of grassroots marketing, mm-hmm. um, and we just were just doing our best with. But it was really uh, amazing to see. Um, I think just how well it's been it's been um, performing and and how much people have have responded to it, um, and in a way that I mean I, you know that that just kind of felt like it was through word of mouth. I mean that was a really um, wonderful thing. Mm. I, you know, um, I would I certainly wouldn't say that this show is the first. I think that um, there's been other um, good examples of. Uh, this kind of thing, but I do think that there's just the, been this overall wave of this kind of animation um, that's becoming more and more like uh, accepted, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like, it's not just stupid, shitty comedy. And it's not just when it's like adult animation, that's not um, just gratuitous bullshit. You know, this is like, the, no, it's a, it's a real story. There's like, real characters it's sincere and and like i i think that uh that feels like it's becoming more and more sort of like accessible like it's becoming more and more of like a, a, a like tolerable i guess and mm-hmm. and that people are responding to it um i mean i hope so i i really do well i think everything finds its way and quality always yeah. finds its place and i think you know it's also it's it's unquantifiable and it's all subjective but the good stuff usually rises and that's why i mentioned like people that are interested in art at a certain level are fans of what nerd writer does because he he analyzes art that's at a sub certain level or he analyzes things in us and so i think it's cool when i saw that i was like yes good i'm glad that he found it he's a rad dude and he's smart and he knows how to like see things and i i felt like when he was explaining i was like yeah these are all the things that i felt but it was better articulated from him which is really cool Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's just there's so much um things. How how did you over the eight year period, obviously there's been gaps and then you've been off in other projects I'm imagining. Yeah. How did you keep the love for this project continuing? Was there like a certain thing or is it the new curiosity or the collaboration of things for you to see a whole new level of it or yeah. Yeah, I mean maybe it was a, a little bit of all that. I, I I um I certainly I'd say for most things that I work on, um, it's not dead to me, even if it's dead to a network or it's, or it gets shell, you know, I, I like, I, I don't want to, I have to see everything through. And, um, this was a kind of an extreme version of that, of course, you know, but, um, every project I think I've worked on has been somewhat of a struggle to get it off the ground eventually you know it has to find the right home and it takes some time and um uh yeah i mean i i was excited about um every step of this and 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 um i don't know i guess like the the breaks on working on other projects uh sort of uh in between was a good sort of uh respite for me and then coming back to this but um yeah, myself and Charles, I mean, I think we were, this is just um, an idea that we were just getting more and more excited about, you know, I, I think we sunk our teeth into the pilot and really poured our hearts into it. And, um, and how, how long was the pilot? How many minutes? 
uh, it was it was about I think it was twenty two minutes. Wow, um, massive. And yeah, and then we when we when it went to max, um, we added we made it more like twenty five minutes, something like that. But um, mm. uh, but yeah, I mean there was just one thing after another. Just thinking about um, uh, I guess trying to I guess like certain goals and things that we were thinking about like for for example like uh animation tropes i mean this is just a, an ongoing thing just the idea of like what if we didn't have like a villain like why is that always a thing i love just, that why 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 can't it just be that these are characters that have shortcomings and and make mistakes came in came in yeah he's a he's a fucked up guy but like he mm. you know i um, like how you 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 turned him into a human a lot of ways you know yeah, yeah. and and that there's some kind of level of empathy I think you have. There's sort of weird redemption, but but even the creature that consumes him, I it's love like that. Yeah. at the end the of the day, mm. it's just back to being a normal little koala in the forest. You know, I I, <laughs> I love that it's like it, it had it had a Took purpose, it had a, an evolutionary function, and that was it. And and this just kind of uh, cross wires and, and this is what happened, but mm. it had no kind of evil intent. Um, yeah. it was just surviving in its own way. Exactly. Cause yeah. even with that kid, I mean, I don't know if there was a name for it if, or if you had one, the, the evil koala, <laughs> but hollow, even we were calling him hollow hollow. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That makes sense too. Yeah. <laughs> but even when hollow was in the beginning, as you first encounter it, minus came in, it was, kind of trying to survive and then another bigger version of itself took over and then it had to go and find its own way and then it came right, upon came like, in right right and Cayman's personality imposed on it and then it became right. like this cyclical infinite. right so, yeah. yeah which is yeah. it's like a parasite you know the, yeah, the concept yeah. of parasites in, in the theoretical like uh, conceptually and actually physically in this story and in, in the film or the, the show itself is it's just like a really beautiful reoccurring theme. And ironically, I started to see a lot of that in, in real life too. And so when I, that show kind of made me think and imprint, oh, I wonder if this person's like, if that's a parasite or if I'm being a parasite to this situation or right, we're, not, right, right. we're sure. not intending to be re uh, harmful. I think like Seneca said, like no man intends to be he evil when he wakes. It's just the, the I don't know how he's saying I'm, I'm messing it up, but people don't have intention. It's just un being unaware, you know? Sure. Sure. No, totally. And, and, um, I mean, uh, the, the came in hollow thing was another good, I mean, I, I give you a couple other examples that just that, um, the name that we didn't really have a name in the show of that character. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a name for any of the characters. And that certainly was on the table for a second. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it's just like, to me, that just kind of felt, I don't know, a little dorky, a little, little stupid to have like the, our main characters naming everything. Like, why would you, yes. it's just weird to assume that you know the names of these things. It doesn't, it just doesn't seem right. So yeah. let's just kind of keep all of that as vague as, as, um, and, and like try to get as real as we can with that. Um, another example of like, these characters are not, uh, kung fu masters they're not the best at fighting they get their ass kicked they're yeah. it's they're like humans. um they're humans relatable and yeah. yeah and and um the violence was relatable too oddly as for a cartoon the, the violence yeah. felt very like kind of sporadic and chaotic and kind of true to form which is kind of you feel sick from it sure yeah yeah, yeah. cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love um, the anti-trope concept though it's cool that you yeah, can have this it, library of tropes and things of be like, okay, well, everybody's going left, so we're just going to go right. Yeah, yeah, as much as we could. I mean, I, sure. obviously, there, you know, like, for instance, flashbacks. We were like, you know, mm. flashbacks are a kind of a very common thing. But what if we used Cayman and his sort of suffering and inner turmoil um, uh, and this kind of symbiotic relation to this parasitic relationship with Hollow to you to be the sort of catalyst to get you into a flashback like mm. if that was your that was your way in every time mm. as opposed to just cutting to it um yeah you know and there's obviously moments where we do just go to a flashback but it was just as much as we could just try to think uh, be as creative as we could with the, the approach um and uh, or, or for instance like 
if you have an organism as a utility and they use it, this creature as like a, a, a mask or whatever, um, um, oxygen mask, the idea of like just avoiding anything to just be totally easy access. It's been in my bag the whole time. Let's try to show where this thing came from or the, the sort of Rube Goldberg machine, the steps that it took to get to that thing. Um, as much as we can, you know, you mentioned this, I've not heard of this Rube Goldberg. Can you, you mentioned this in a, in one of your interviews too. Oh yeah. Can you extrapolate? Um, yeah. Um, so, um, this is kind of a big part of the, the, um, short was, um, this cartoonist, um, uh, Rube Goldberg, who basically made these like, um, I mean, if you look, look him up, you could see, um, it's almost these like kind of made up inventions that has a very kind of cause and effect, like one step kind of going into the next and seeing how it plays out. I mean, that's the short, I think does this more than, um, the rest of the show because it's there, because there is no, uh, dialogue, but, um, you know, I'm operating this thing and I'm getting, uh, the, 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 the function, I'm getting the thing that I need from this one process, which leads me to the next thing. Mm. And you're kind of following this cause and effect until you get to the final result. Mm. Um, so like a, a Rube Goldberg machine would be like, you know, uh, you'd see this whole assembly line on like making like pancakes or something. And it's all these, there's this whole kind of crazy elaborate. Um, but I think like, it's essentially a, complex machine that has a um that is creating a very simple task. uh yeah task mm. Exactly. Mm. um it's cool yeah, so I love, that. I love how the characters are all like naturally there and they're like you can tell that they've done these things and experimented much more off the screen so when you enter into yeah. it you're just kind of like okay well I didn't even know that. Like when they put their hand in the thing, it pop blows up and they flow in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mass, yeah. They had to breathe in it, or there totally. was just the, yeah. It's and also it wasn't. How do I describe it? It wasn't like let's just make a cool creature because we want to make cool creatures, which is just never the good idea. It's like why don't we right. find a way? As you mentioned, let's have the writing and the creature design symbiotically relate, so they can be like. Well, why don't we have it like this? So he has to float away from her, and then she's stuck down right, there. And right. We create yeah. this distance between them, and it creates that hostility. And that, and totally. then she gets closer to Vesta, which is, I think, the name of the planet, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. and she starts to see it unravel, which is really yeah. beautiful too. Mm. And and I and I would just to add to that. I, I mean, I would say that, like, you know, um, to bring someone like Sam and or or, or Cayman back to this, of like these are. Came in has a fragile mind. He's a very he's in a very delicate stage, uh, uh, like very delicate state, because of everything that kind of like transpired. But now you're seeing that against the backdrop of this nature and that kind of juxtaposition. You know, we were doing a lot of that with this. Sam is a good example of a character who's resisting. You know, everyone's sort of embracing this flow that the planet that there's a rhythm and there's a flow that this planet has and people and characters like Ozzy and Ursula are kind of embracing it, but Sam is resisting it, which inevitably, you know, yeah. um, don't, don't he, spoil it. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh, just in case somebody's listening and not watching, yeah. cause that, that uh, I mean the way you, you, you composed you and the team composed that was, it was just, uh, it was great. It was fantastic. Amazing. And it was Thank just it, 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 fully emotive, which is great. And again, as I mentioned, as I was watching, I was like, I think it would take a lot away from this experience if it wasn't done in the form of the medium which you chose it to be, which is, I, I, I'm always saying this, and people that listen to this podcast, they know this, is like, I say your style is, is all your failures you've overcome. And I feel like there's tremendous style in this because I feel like you probably, through your artist journey, have gone, well, I don't, I'm just, I don't know. Let's, we can get into this, but I'm not, yeah. I don't know how to do this. As you mentioned earlier, I don't know how to do all those things, but I know how to do this. So I'm just going to yeah, do this. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, um, this show would look like absolute dog shit if it were just me. I mean, I, I, I got so, uh, lucky with the, the crew that I worked with and I learned a lot from them. And I think everybody kind of brought their own sort of forte 
um, to the to the show. I mean, you know, Benji Brook um, was the supervising director on, and, and was just huge. And mm. artists that we we're working with a lot of the same artists on the new show that I'm doing mm. um, uh, uh, called Common Side Effects, and it's about mushrooms, and it's about uh, big pharma and the DEA and all this stuff. <laughs> But sounds but, like my uh, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so the um, cyber mushrooms? Yeah, well, oh. it's, so it's 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 a made up psilocybin mushroom that's essentially kind of a cure all. Mm. This this character finds this mushroom that's essentially like a, can just cure you of um, any sort of illness or disease. Mm. And because basically, in like big pharma and uh, wants to take them out because it would eradicate all of their products yeah and <laughs> sounds like current day stuff with psychedelics yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i did a um, rabbit hole when i got into that i was like why is this stuff illegal and i was like oh reagan and then the hippies and then right, black right, panthers right. and we got to make something illegal to to point people and put them in cages and stuff it's totally like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah this is a bunch of yeah. bullshit <laughs> yeah totally totally <laughs> the more you know the more the less you know pretty much yeah totally <laughs> oh that's cool but, yeah but yeah we we you know and so we're working with a lot of the same um, artists, uh, for example, one of the directors on this current show is Camille Bozak, and she was the storyboard artist. She was a storyboard artist on Scavengers, and just absolutely brilliant. Mm. Um, I love the blocking. But, the blocking is so the, fantastic. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and also, you know, we worked with, it was an international crew. We mm -hmm. worked with a lot of artists who are French and Portuguese. and Korean, um, too? uh yeah. some korean yeah, yeah. and um and italian and mm. um but it we worked it was everyone worked remotely basically love that um that's cool it was really it was, production i know i know yeah. and it was such a beehive mm. mentality i mean it was so cool how excited everybody was about the project and yet we were all working from from home disparate. um yeah yeah disparate yeah, exactly do you think it would be better if you guys were all in the same building or do you Perhaps. Well, um, you know, uh, the company that I founded with a couple partners, we we have an office, we have a space, and so a lot of the production is here, and it's mm -hmm. really nice to be with people. But um, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of artists that work remotely. I I'm not sure, uh, like what the what the best thing would have been for scavengers. Mm -hmm. Personally, a lot of the times I like to kind of review stuff on my own <laughs> sure yeah. and you know and so you like can really process it and not have somebody it. looking at you while you're critiquing their work exactly yeah. exactly um and i think that the coolest thing is like everybody has their own sort of um you know time of operation when they're like some people work better at midnight some people work better like we all have our own time where we sort of get into like the zone you know yeah. the flow state and i uh I certainly like to do that alone. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of the artists are similar to that. If somebody being as busy as I imagine you probably are, how do you even find the flow state and where is it in your day? I it's uh man, it's funny you bring this up. I was just complaining about this to my wife, but I, I feel <laughs> like I'm I don't it's hard for me to kind of get into that um these days. Mm. Uh cause I, I I have been busy. Um and I'm, I feel like I'm bouncing around a lot and um, I'm trying to, to just kind of get a little bit more into that. But it's, it's um, you know, I think that it, it'll happen when I'm excited, like about an idea. I'll get really like thrilled about a certain little thing. And then I, I want to sort of, and it feels so rewarding afterwards, you know, but yeah. um, well, you synthesize the drug, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, uh, or I'll go on like long walks. I mean, that's mm -hmm. where a lot of nice ideas come from and stuff like that. But yeah, but, um, yeah I need to, uh, I, I kind of miss it. I want to get back into it. Yeah, I find I'm quite a bad human being when I don't allow myself to have that. It's like this special release that you have to do. Totally. It's hard 100%. to get busy. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. It, it really is. And, um, but it, it's like, it's the, to me the the reason for doing it all you know mm -hmm. the, the early days of scavengers i mean there would be i, I was um pretty uh hands-on with the editing and i love putting together animatics that have a lot of the kind of heart and soul of it and so i'll have scratch music and i'll, I'll even put in scratch sound design and mm -hmm. everything i'll try to make this thing like 
even though it's not animated yet, I, it's going to be a joy to watch. I mean, that's the goal every time. Yeah. But I really like, <laughs> as, as cheesy as it sounds, I mean, I would like to just try to make myself cry, you know, yeah. build a scene up and just kind of like. If you're not entertaining you can, yourself, who you're entertaining. Yeah, 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 exactly. If you can kind of emote like through just pictures, I mean, it's the, such a cool, um, you know, feeling. But Yeah, it is the thing. I, I, I mentioned this, I think I might've mentioned this on podcast with Josh, but this is something that I discovered later on after watching the film many times, but I'm sure you've seen 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh yeah. Of course. And yeah. um, this is something that didn't really dawn on me until later on. I don't know who told me, but the, um, what do they call it? The obelisk or the, uh, the big the obelisk, I guess, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the monolith. The monolith, sorry. I always yeah, confuse yeah. it with the obelisk. The monolith, uh, if you take the monolith and then if you turn it, and then it's basically the film. It's the same aspect ratio. So Stanley oh, was like, oh, we're, we're actually, we're creatures that are using this method of, of moving imagery and sound to transcend our current consciousness. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. Damn him. <laughs> yeah, wow. Because, you know, the monolith, <laughs> when you read the book, you're like, Okay, I can see it going many different ways, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, how do you like wow. that? That's some yeah, mind, that's damn. some Stanley Kubrick mind fuckery, right there. <laughs> <laughs> which I love. But to talk about why you're saying like I I, I want to do it so I can cry or I want to feel an emotion, like yeah. you should. I feel that, and I think why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you right. want to emote the feeling from yourself and go? Let me put this out there and see if other people cry, or let me put this out there and see if other people get excited, or I mean, that's really the, that's, you know, I think that's the the whole reason to do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it, it, at the end of the day, I, it's, you just, you just want to tell a, a compelling story and, um, as, as best as you can. And I, I, I felt like, um, there was a, there was a funny kind of balance of like, you want to tell a compelling story that feels right for you, but mm-hmm. then how universal is that? How much is that kind of, you know, do other people connect with that? But, and I feel like an interesting thing with this show is that like, especially since people were working all around the world and, and there's so many different languages, it, it, it felt like the, the connection was nature was this was just all the things on this planet. And I think that people really, um, uh, you know, connected with like, just the 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 um human interactions with these things and mm-hmm. it almost just felt like it was like built in to everybody who worked on it mm, i can feel that for sure didn't seem like i'm sure there's friction points through production but it felt like there was no way it could have gotten done without a large amount of people on to the same rhythm which is great yeah yeah and and i would um and please stop me if I'm talking too much. Uh, no, this is the point. This okay. is your interview. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, the, stop talking. I'm asking you questions <laughs> on your podcast. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I mean that that was a. I think this this I, to help kind of keep keep the propulsion, the momentum with the with the team and everything. A lot of the times, it was like our composer um, who. I think did an outstanding job on the amazing. show. And that's a whole really thing I want to cool talk stuff. about. The sound design yeah. and, the, and, the, and the score is just amazing. It's, totally, it's, totally. And so, it's so tan. It's so much its own thing too, which is like, that's, yes, like I feel, I feel yeah. hints of influence without saying it's that. It's like a nice, yeah. beautiful culmination. Oh, of that's awesome. Yeah, that's, well, here's yeah. a, an interesting fact with all this is that everybody that kind of had big roles in the show. I'd say at least the, the main like uh, directors, all, the supervising director, the director, the composer, and I think even the sound designer, no one had worked in TV before. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I know. That's actually the way to do it. I was just watching the behind the scenes of, not the behind the scenes, but it was like the process of how Nightmare Before Christmas came about. And it's one of my favorite yeah. films. It's so fucking good. And yeah. Danny Elfman had never done scores before. This was back when he was doing Oingo Boingo. Yeah. And, but um, Tim Burton was like, I just love your music. Uh, can you score this? And, and then I think he did Batman and stuff. But I think it's really important. I feel like, 
I could be wrong, but I, th- I feel like when you, and you mentioned this earlier, we could tap into that. It's like when you compartmentalize or you say, I'm this and I do this and this is the only thing I do. Right. I think you breed in weakness and it kind of releases like a flaw in you where you're not, I think it's good to grab, grab disparate things. Sometimes it fails, but oftentimes totally. it doesn't. You get this hybridized version where people don't know what to not expect and they just kind of go in with open mind and then the, you yeah. feel it in the art, you know. Absolutely. Everything has Absolutely. a life cycle, of course, you know. But, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, there was always a thing I, I, I thought about. Um, uh, my grandpa showed me Koyan Esquatsi when I was mm. a kid. And I, wow. I just, it, Good job, it Grandpa. Stuck with me in such, I know. <laughs> it's a, it's a, he had no idea I mean, what was, he was, was doing in your brain. I was a little brain. too young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, wow, um, the world. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> um, but an interesting thing with that that I, that I kept thinking about, especially with this production, was that there were times where Godfrey Reggio would have a scene and he would say, yeah, I need you to make music for this scene. Mm-hmm. And then there'd be other times where Philip Glass would have a song mm-hmm. and then Godfrey Reggio would make the scene, build the scene based off that song. Yeah. So it was this really nice as kind of like, be. as it should be. And, yeah. and, and I think that kind of organic process really happened. So it would be yeah. like Nick would make a piece, a piece of music Good. and I'd send it to everyone around the world that's working on the show. Yeah. And they'd come back and just have so much more momentum. They'd get inspired. and mm-hmm. But then sometimes I'd get like, hey, we got to lay out some rough animation from this t- team. Let me show this to Nick or to Axel, who's working on music or sound design. Mm-hmm. And they get inspired. And, and yes. so it was this awesome just constant feedback. I love that. Um, it was really, really fun. I felt that. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Because I think sometimes sound and score is 80% of it. Um, yeah. And yeah. sound and score really, I was just like, dude, come on, really? Like, this is so yeah. fucking good. Like, even in the intro, the intro sequence, like, you have this kind of symphonic, beautiful, kind of quiet, distant feeling. And then you have these high contrasting action elements. And it's just that, that juxtaposition is I love so that good. Stuff. Oh, me too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like everything. Yeah. Like I said, it's all singing right to me. I'm like, dude, this is so great. And <laughs> but it, awesome. that disparate, that disparate attack, like uh, that attack to go like, let's have contrast and things. I always yeah. start with music when it comes to these things. It's, it's yeah. almost always the key. Either I'll yeah. make it or I will work with my friends who make incredible music and because everything and emotion starts from there. And then you kind of get ideas and then you go back and forth until it becomes this like weird alchemy you know? yeah and, and especially yeah, if, you're, totally. if you're in sync with it and there's no friction it's all love and respect and and there's a desire to explore together which is really tricky yeah absolutely yeah. And, and that that song too the theme song of the show was um something that was made i've been working with nick he, he'd done music for basically so many of my other like shorts leading up to this that's good and you already had he, a second hand then like a yeah yeah there. And he did this theme song. This is like right when I met him, um, and on a thumb piano, bring, 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 and I was like, "This is," and it just was like lodged in my brain. Like I, I, and so um, I'm so happy that it finally got to see. It's a you core know, melody. To, to be, yeah. yeah. Oh man, I love it. It kind of reminded me of like when John Williams was seeking the Close Encounters score. And he was trying all these different formations, and then Stephen is like, "Oh, this is it, you know, yeah." Bah, yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, but but yeah. it's hard to find things in those little, you know, that that you haven't heard that right. um, is unique enough, but not being different just to be different. It still has the sense of like, okay, I'm. It's, it's it feels familiar, but it's uniquely its own thing, which is, I just yeah, I think it, it all makes sense to asking you these things now. I was almost like. I think these are the answers to the questions, but it's cool to reaffirm that, oh, no, it was like this symbiotic relationship that I had with this close creative that I've been working with totally closely yeah. for years now. And now it's yeah. like that influence of one another. What does yeah. it look like for you when you have an idea, there's nothing there on the plane, and it's just your time? Joe sits with Joe starting off from nothing and is formulating something for writing number one, and then for drawing. So the two things, your process from zero to like starting to build. Hmm. Um, and does it repeat itself too? I mean, I, I, I guess it maybe starts with like, 
uh, visuals first. It'll almost be like I'll do like kind of a rough pass of thumbs mm. to kind of get this I, on paper I or mean, digital. Um, first on paper, mm. I'll do it like in a sketch pad, like you know, like this, and yeah. just um, and then I'll I'll do it digital and I'll kind of clean it up a little bit more. Mm. But it, but also this is sort of like taking walks and thinking about, or like throughout my day, if there's little things that I'll notice or see if it's in a nature doc or it's on the bus or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll compile those ideas. So it's a lot of just unrelated ideas. And then, um, in forms of writing or notes or a combination of thumbnails and little shots. Sometimes of ideas. It'll be like writing in my mm -hmm. phone mm -hmm. and it'll just be like, here's a, Here's a cool thought. symbiosis. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. then, um, and then I'll do like really crude thumbs to just sort of like play it out and then kind of building like sort of a script off of that. Um, uh, and, um, going from there, but, I, but I would say it would start with like thumbs and boards first. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, a lot of the times it, it'd also just be one, image or drawing that kind of evokes something bigger um mm. and uh, but with but with like scavengers you know it was maybe a little bit of a i, I mean i had a lot of help with that so it was yeah big team. like going from these th thumbs to we had a writer's room that that was able to kind of like who's in that room in. is there a group a group of you yeah so yeah. <clears throat> um jenny diker jillian goldfluss Sean Buckaloo and James Merrill and myself and Charles were, um, so six the, people, the so six people. Wow. Yeah. How do you um, even navigate that? You come in there and be like, we're going to make something here. And then, yeah, it's a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise for yeah. sure. And, um, you know, it's funny when you go from scripts to boards and then boards to animatic and animatic to animation, the way things kind of get translated, you start to, see through that process oh this didn't quite land the way that it we intended on it you know from the script so let's rework that and this sort of organic process allowed for us to kind of go back and retroactively put mm. retrofit it back into the script before and it became too polished and you before couldn't go it back became too, oh, exactly and so there you was this really like nice kind of ping pong were you doing daily yeah and kind a of lot going, of daily oh, this isn't working and exactly okay and so my day would be broken up into um, maybe like it's like a few hours in the writer's room mm -hmm. and then reviewing kind of props and concept designs and giving notes or drawovers on that. Um, then going into the edit room and working with the editor on, on a scene. And um, I mean, it's just bouncing around. There's a nice little per like, um, you know, quiet before the storm uh in these productions because these episodes start to cascade and it gets really crazy towards the end sure so in the beginning part you really are able to be a lot more hands-on with this kind of stuff and and we were fortunate that like charles and i had a lot of time because of those gaps between mm -hmm. short pilot and series that we were able to kind of try to think i don't know get a head start on these ideas and stuff were you able to play good cop, bad cop with Charles? Oh, for sure. I yeah. think so. That's yeah. an important dynamic. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what 100%. makes it good to have two people involved too. I mean, you have to, your ego takes a hit and you share the, yeah. they share the wealth and the bounty, but I feel like it's oftentimes better if you can find a collaborator that you're, you're quite connected to. Yeah. Yeah. Charles is great. And, uh, he's, he's been a blast to work with. And we made a short prior to the scavenger short called from God's mouth to your ears. Mm -hmm. And we were just goofing off. I mean, we were just having fun. But um, he, uh, you know, he was very hands-on with the, um, I mean, the look of the show, those backgrounds. That's, mm. that's like, that's something that I think he spent a lot of time kind of developing and working on. Um, and, of course, we had a huge department. I love the background. That, that, but so his, good. yeah, those backgrounds. That, and I think that there's something about this, this is what really was exciting and and i and i think related to the sound design um as well but but the backgrounds i felt lent themselves to a, that sort of tactile asmr-ness mm -hmm. of the show mm -hmm. where it's like yeah. a character rubbing their hand on the bark of a tree like 
with the design of and, and that style and there's so much of that kind of like intricate that detail mm. it's so gratifying and so yeah i uh, the 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 sound design part was a really fun process to to kind of have that in there it's a lot of work in there i can really because i i've done a bit of sound design and like folly and like we've done things and it's 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 not easy it's a ton of work an 80 day yeah. production schedule to produce six and a half hours worth of animated content is pretty insane which is kind of yeah. good though i would imagine the speed was so rapid that you couldn't really second guess so you had to keep pushing forward so that's 100 percent. yeah it's absolutely probably not good for your health but it's probably good for the show so you don't dwell no. too much yeah. you know i mean in fact i mean uh, i will say when we made the pilot i um i was there was a moment where i was getting so freaked out about the uh the some of the animation that was that uh we were getting back or whatever that i had a i had a, like a sort of a breakdown yeah panic and attack I, it was like a panic attack that led to like mm. a full blown like i i i couldn't swallow food so uh -huh. i had to puree my food for 3 months oh wow and yeah there was just it was just a, a and i think a lot of it was like well this is like this is tv this is how um you're not going to have time to be able to like mm. address everything that you want. And yeah, I think a, a real fear just sort of set in of like, you had and, thought uh, it would, but then it didn't. And then you're just sitting with the truth and this yeah. represents me publicly globally. And yeah. yes. Yeah. And a paradigm. Yeah. 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 That's a real hard place for so, the ego. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. And like, learn like how you got to, past like, it, obviously I did get past it. I yeah. can eat solid foods now. But... That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, it sounds like you're a true artist where you, you wear it on your sleeve and you feel everything. And this is what's going to lead me to my next question, which I would find very difficult to do. You seem very hands-on. You seem very much like the fuel of the process as your identity wrapped in the art. How does one person like yourself go, okay, I'm going to take this thing that I love and that I've built and created and cultivated and I'm going to share it with all these strangers. How do you do that? <laughs> um <laughs> very very a, carefully <laughs> yeah that's a good question i mean i i, I don't know I, I i guess uh do you mean like how do i how did you figure out the, the way to collaborate with such a massive team across the world I'm, I'm sure it took it took on rhythm and it became a thing and then you started to go okay this is really the way but in the beginning as you mentioned it probably wasn't the way and how did you oh, transcend yeah. that i that's a great question. I am still learning. <laughs> I feel like I was, I was such a stubborn ass mm. and, and probably awful, awful to work with, but, um, mm. I learned from a lot of people and, um, and, uh, you know, it's funny how just delegating skills mm. like that, that was just a thing that, um, I feel like I had to really improve on and work on, on, on this, on this governor's production. And it's a lot easier now, but a lot of the times you always kind of got to a point where like, I don't know how to convey my idea. I don't know how to like tell this person mm. how I want to do it Articulate. without, mm. without wanting to just do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and I was blown away seeing people that were able to articulate in, in such a way that, that they got what they wanted. I mean, just to, again, to bring up Benji Brook, um, just a tour de force with um, the being patient with an artist and really like they didn't nail it the first time, mm. but don't give up on them and keep working with them. Mm. And then there's this learning curve that happens. Yeah, and he was just yeah. so good at like, like, let's just be patient with this person. Let's, let's, let's just kind of work with them. Mm. And sure enough, not only did they improve drastically, but like they ended up doing it so much better than mm. you would have been able to do it, you know? Wow. And, mm. and so how many times still... did that take for that to happen for you to go, okay, I can sit back a little bit and, because I right. consider it, it's like you need to understand your bliss. Once you understand what right. makes you blissful, then you have yeah. to find that in others and then replicate it, which is really yeah. hard to synthesize. Yeah. It takes a lot of trust and time. It's yeah. possible, but it's very difficult absolutely. to do. It. Yeah, absolutely. That's what a director I, I, is, really, in my opinion. Totally. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, right. and and I and I think that it was just it felt like a thing where it was like, you know, no one can read your mind, dude. Like you, you gotta just yeah. let like work with this person they want to download what you're trying to what you what, what you want but like 
you need to kind of be patient with them and work with them. Do you make a lot of videos? And, I'd make a lot of videos when I work yes. from afar. So OBS is like my, <laughs> okay, making notes yes. and articulating. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Wait, wait, what's OBS? OBS is a, a software. It's just a free software that oh. you can record your voice in your video. And I just make, oh, cool. I just make tons of videos and just Amazing. pass yeah. them off. It really helps. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. A lot of videos, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and, um, sharing a lot of kind of just quick sketches and mm. um also just like hey here's a movie to check out tonight um days of heaven <laughs> Why you, you all should just just sit and watch days of heaven i put this i made a sizzle i love that real mm. you saw it. okay i love that it, please it, please it explain just, it to those that are listening that are, i don't follow you on instagram that would and yeah. should yeah of course um it was basically like a compilation of mo scenes from movies and, and just random things. It'd be like the Isle of Man TT race in mm. Scotland or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then it's with music. So mm. you would have, um, you know, Terrence Malick's Days of Heaven. You'd have Michael Mann's Last of the Mohicans. Mm. You would have, this is a huge inspiration, but it's called Primitive Technology. Mm. And it's a YouTube channel that was huge and, um, or, or Lipsiki is another YouTube channel, but just random things like that. So it'd be music kind of playing with this, but it was essentially just to, for, for artists to understand the tone of the show and the feel of the show. Mm -hmm. And we just shared it with the writers, the artists, everyone. Um, it was just something I cut together in the beginning. And, um, and I think it, I, I think if you watch the show and then you watch the sizzle, you could see the, 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 um, you know, kind of <clears throat> parallel there. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll be like arpeggio music with high intensity racing or whatever. And that kind of combination, mm -hmm. um, really helped kind of develop the, like Ozzy and her bike and that kind of thing. But, yeah. I, I, when I saw that, I was like, of course you did that. Makes sense. Cause then it's like, <laughs> also like you need to get somebody from speed zero to a hundred to understand you. So by showing them this, like, okay, I know these references. Yeah. And then, so when he, when yeah. he comes back and it articulates this saying, okay, I get it. Because a lot of these yeah. things are escaped on the younger generation too, and not to sound like I'm really old, but a lot of these films and this these references are old. Not a yeah. lot of people have seen some Sarah and Count Scotsy and all these different things. Sure, and right. To right. remind them exactly. that they exist is really important, and also to sh shed light totally. on them too, because they are they're very transcending to the mind if you allow it too, which is cool. So totally, absolutely, yeah. yeah I mean, Sam Sarah and Baraka, those are those were those were huge. I mean, that any anything with like these these directors that are sort of uh you know making a feature that is void of any kind of uh dialogue and it's just it's just visuals but there's also there's a narrative there like it's really cool to see and very refreshing yeah they're rare and few and far between are, which yeah. it makes sense and i get it because it's not super marketable but i would say i mean i could be i don't know why but the, i would say the human psyche is getting exhausted of the fast and furious 10 and the jurassic right, park yeah. 40 and like star wars yeah. 1 million it's like man yeah we do need something right new up. here you know which is <laughs> yeah but it's good and right. I, as i said i can't i'm not going to complain it's i might as well just let it be what it is and realize it's not for me but to champion the things that i find valuable to to us as a culture and a species I would love well, to. I also, right, go ahead, I also get the feel, sorry. I also get the feeling that, like culturally, I think people are also collectively just getting uh, sick of it. You know, you could kind of feel so. it yeah. dying out a little bit, where it's like, yeah, the the box office uh, numbers are not nearly as high as they used to be for Marvel movies and Star Wars movies, and it's like, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's lost its luster, I would imagine. At least for me, yeah. it's like I just I told myself I'm just not going to even contribute to that anymore i just can't and yeah and it doesn't give me anything if anything yeah. it just makes me frustrated and feel depressed that it even like exists and it's like i know i know exactly <laughs> but i realize exactly. it's like i should not imprint my emotions on these things that i cannot control they're just the thing sure. out there right. and, and all i can control is just making rad stuff with people i love and that's it so. yeah totally totally <laughs> I would, absolutely i have this book i love adventure time i'm sure you do as well yeah yeah the art of ooh have you seen that book no. Oh, it's fantastic. Pendleton, Pendleton Ward's book. But anyways. I love uh, Penn. He's great. Yeah. He's just a genius. Um, oh, man. Such a core genius, that guy. But oh, I would really, really, I was like, hey, man, we need a scavenger's rain book. 
Is this even oh, yeah. a possibility? Is this on the horizon? Some oh, potentially? I'm working on it. I'm working okay. on it. Whatever uh, I can do to help push that, let me know because oh, I'm sure you, you have you. an abundance of incredible art from because even we watching do. the in betweens, is that what you call that? The the in betweens of yeah, the yeah. keyframes, basically. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the in betweens, yeah. yeah, and 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 then yeah, the keyframes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have we have a ton of art. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, we're working on getting an art book, also a vinyl. A lot of people have been yes. talking about yeah. the like the like music. Wax so. Records, I'm sure, would be down to collaborate and do something for you guys. There's so many things. I'm sure. I know. There's a yeah. there's a hub of people that like good stuff and they would support it. I'm sure. Um, That'd be great. But yeah, I need an art uh, book. I need one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> cool. Those that are curious about your process too, sounds like you use traditional mediums but when it comes to using the computer what's the software that you interact with to employ this from start to end do you use one software and it transitions and then i saw there's compositing added to things and yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean um I, it's it's Corel a variety draw. of different things <laughs> yeah it's it's a variety of different things it's it's uh we all draw on these kind of cintiqs and yeah I have it's one. a lot of it is like tv paint i, I mm. think that was the main the, the biggest medium for for scavengers mm. Um, never even heard but, of it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a small, uh, yeah, it's, it's a kind of a small, uh, company, but, um, good software. But, though? Yeah. Great software yeah. animate. Um, mm. and obviously like after effects and premiere. Um, I think those were the, the kind of like the full on Adobe suite. No Photoshop. Photoshop, or Photoshop yeah. Yeah. Photoshop. Yeah. yeah seems like the um, backgrounds were done in photoshop primarily or something yeah or, yes yeah. totally yeah. um and uh what else hmm. i think that was pretty for the most part it, oh uh, like storyboard pro mm, i know that we did a lot of that stuff and um made the storyboards out of that but um that kind of helps you see like is that called tweening is that you're like seeing between the frames and then you can draw over and kind of like make your boards quickly oh, yeah. and kind of make animatics quite roughly yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, and and Storyboard Pro is great with that kind of thing too, because um, it, the, a lot of times it's called like onion skinning. Yeah, onion skinning. Like, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and um, uh, I a lot of the times I I use a lot of I I work in animate pretty much mostly of this the new show that we're doing, which is a lot more it's a it's it's leaning more like comedy, and so there's a lot of and I'm a nut about lip syncing and all that stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Um, um animates my kind of a my go to. I saw you ex- do an example of your animation where you act out the scene. Yeah. This yeah. is really important, huh? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um watching yourself and your intonations and stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, originally I would just use it for myself to kind of follow, but um a lot of the times I'll I'll try to make as much as I can with that and send it to um Other artists. The team, yeah, exactly. Um, but it certainly helps. I mean, starting with the audio and then kind of like building from that is, um, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. usually how it goes for, for that. But Gavinger's camera language had its own thing too, which I thought was interesting. Is that by design mm-hmm. too? Like how you're blocking and how you're moving through shots. Some shots had these dynamics and some would go through things and then sometimes it'd be locked off and panning shots. Was this all through yeah. the blocking process and kind of discovery? It was. It was, and we also were building sort of these guidelines as we were going, um, sort of setting the language for the show. And and it did start to create like do's and don'ts where it was like, okay, um, let's n- don't use fisheye lens. We're never going to do a fisheye lens yeah. or let's not, you know, <laughs> or, uh, or um, here's, an, I mean, it was like blocking and staging, but also poses. And I was like, I really want to do naturalistic poses. Mm-hmm. The thing I would say a, a big don't is the sort of like Spider-Man landing pose. Mm-hmm. Like we're not doing that. Yeah. Another one that's like a very kind of common sort of like Justice League Flat. style thing. Yeah. Don't like l- think about figure drawing. Think about yeah. um, the bodies are turned like, and there's depth. The bodies are them. turned yeah. and yeah, and the, just the way that you're even sitting right now, it's like there, this is there's a naturalism to it that I think is the thing to embrace. As far as the camera shots and stuff. I mean, we were all very inspired by a lot of live action stuff. I, I would say even probably more so than animation. I mean, definitely, uh, you know, there were subconscious, uh, th- like subconsciously there was things that we were inspired by with animation, like Atomo and, and um, 
Satoshi Kon and all and and mm. that kind of thing, but and and Nausicaa or whatever. Of course, Nausicaa, but, yeah. But 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 certainly, kind of always talking about, um, you know, oh, here's a shot in the Revenant that has this really cool mm. camera angle. Here's a, a scene in the Master that's like a great camera to to um, kind of go, you know, work off of or whatever. Mm. And because it is animation, it's like you can do that because, yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's almost like it's allowed, in a sense, to to kind of take from that in that sense, and then use it as a as an inspiration. But yeah, the yeah. camera language is fantastic. I know you have to go here in a minute. Um, I could talk to you for hours, I'm sure. So <laughs> maybe someday we'll do another one if you ever up for it. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you or or you do come out here and uh, and uh, but I, yeah, I'd love to do another one. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to come and see the studio. I'd, I'll definitely cool. get that on the calendar. Um, Sweet. Two last questions, hopefully. Uh, Go ahead, yeah. Favorite films of the past five years that have had an impact on you? Favorite shows or films? It doesn't have to be just a form of shows movie. or films. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, let's see. Um, shows, I would say. I mean, uh, Scavengers Reign. How to with John Wilson? Never big even one. heard about that. Um, that's a. It's an HBO show, um, and uh, it's a it's a that was that was really nice. Um, I saw man, I always blank on these kind of questions. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> I have them always no. there, but I always forget too. When people ask me, I'm like, I don't know what's that thing. It's okay. I loved I loved Bo is Afraid. I thought that was that, that was um, that's the the latest Ari Aster movie. I really enjoyed mm. that. Um, yeah, that's right. I know that. Definitely. And, uh, that was Jury Joaquin, Duty. Right? I, that's Joaquin. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Um, there's a show called Jury Duty that I really liked. Mm. That was good. Mm. Uh, it's a lot more wholesome and, and, uh, but it was, but it was, but it was good. Mm. Um, and, um, I don't know. I mean, the, the I, I could, t I could tell you like, Big ones that I certainly thought about, especially for the for the show, like Under the Skin, Jonathan yeah, Glazer. Yeah, that that's a big one. That's always um, in my mind too when I'm making things. Yeah, yeah. really cool stuff. Very mature um, sci-fi and super weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blank and I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I, it's kind of a big question, and it sounds like you're also. Yeah, you pull from a lot of references from many multiple generations and stuff too, so it makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which I like. Yeah. I love that. You, if, yeah. if you could give advice, this is the last question. If you could give advice to your younger self, some of the best advice you think you could give. I know this is another loaded question, but no, no, it, can, I, I it doesn't have to one. just be one thing. It could be multiple. But yeah, if you could just say, "Hey, man, you know, blank, blank, blank," to make yes. yourself better, hopefully, hundred percent, what would that be? I would say uh, whatever you, uh, whatever project you decide to dig into, I would say just don't give up on it. Mm. Finish it. Um, uh, I would tell myself to maybe talk less to other people about my ideas mm. and and spend more time executing it. I feel like I had a tendency to to uh, I would like to talk about my ideas and then I almost kind of felt like I achieved, I did it uh, and then and then I just never had the desire to do it. Mm. I think setting my expect setting my my goals to a manageable level. Mm. So it's like instead of me saying I'm going to make a feature <laughs> on my own, I would say I'm going to make a one minute short, and it's going to be the best one minute short mm. I can make right now. And I'm going to I'm going to do that. Mm. And the more you get into this habit, I think it's just you become obsessed. And I think that was the big thing is like just get obsessed with what you're doing and put your blinders on and, it, and disregard, uh, don't get discouraged by other shit that's coming out that, that might feel too similar or whatever. Mm. If you just stick with it and, and follow through on it, that, that would be huge. I also would say that like every short that I've made, none of it, n nothing ever went viral ever. Mm. Uh, that just wasn't a thing. And I, um, but I, I think that just being kind of stubborn and, and sort of just obsessed and, and, and you start to develop a language and you start to kind of carve out, uh, uh, you know, your, your, your style, your look and, and, um, 
what you want to say. And, and I think that, uh, yeah, I, I would, I would say just finish projects and maybe <laughs> spend more time making things and less time pitching things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. More you time. Can get, you can get lost in that world and mm. it could just be a waste of time and discouraging. And I think that, um, what you make speaks for itself, you know, always um, does. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It does more for you than anything else. So yeah, finishing your projects, totally. talking less, executing more, making sure you're managing your goals, be obsessed, disregard the the noise of others and don't pitch, just do. Yeah. Don't pitch, just do. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. It's good. It's, I mean, it's exact advice that I was hoping to hear for myself too. And a reminder. Awesome. Yeah. We have a lot of projects and things that are somewhat similar in a lot of ways too. And, um, so totally, like, yeah. And I've given up on them a lot of ways and it's like, it's so sad, <laughs> but yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I get you though. Yeah. I, I totally get it. Yeah. But I'm yeah. catching you after the rise of a, of a very big milestone. So I'm able to see you from a perspective from a little bit different than say when you first released scavengers or sure. even before that. Yeah. So it's cool to, to, sure. to be able to see you in this new light, which is great. So yeah, Thank man. You, Thank you, Joe. Thank you to you. Thank you, thank you, Ash, so much for for having me. Yeah, and everybody on the team, please uh, send my regards. You guys are doing, you're fighting the good fight, and it's something that uh, the universe needs. And I'm very much appreciative. And I can't wait to go back and rewatch the whole season again for the third time now. So, <laughs> yeah, that means a lot, Ash. Thank you so much for having me. That was a blast. I appreciate really it. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,